So first problem we are going to discuss here. What I said, I'll discuss all the assignment part. So let me look at the first problem. Which is given an input sequence of numbers which contains both positive number and negative number. Objective is to find the subsequence which has a maximum sum. Please note that all these questions are involving either divide and conquer or decrease and conquer. Therefore, finding a solution using plain iteration, that is not what we are looking at. You have to find a smaller problem, take the current problem, find the smaller instance of the problem, and then solve it. Come to a such a small size that you can solve by brute force as a problem of size 1, problem of size 2, or 3 or 4, whatever the small size problem is. Once you solve it, then combine the solution of a small problem to the bigger problem, and that is what all these assignments are. So, do not use iteration by force, kill look back and solve by iteration. Objective is to learn divide and conquer or decrease and conquer. Divide and conquer means divide the problem into two or multiple parts. Decrease and conquer means lose the problem size if problem size is n, make it n minus 1 or n minus 2 or whatever small size. And then when you come to the lowest, then solve it. And that is what we are looking at in this case. Now let's look at this sequence, which is 2, 3, 2, minus 3, 1.5 minus 1, 3, minus 2, 3, and 3. Now, how do we solve this problem? And that is what I'm trying to explain in this case. So if we look at, in this case, the maximum search sequence happens to be this 1.5 minus 1, 3, 1 1.5 minus 1, 3, which is basically gives you 3.5. If we take any other sequence, if we take only these two, it is two. If I take this gives you zero. If I take this alone, it's only three. In case there are multiple sequences with same value that you can choose either one. So how do you go about doing this? And that's I plan to explain. So let's look at how do we do so. Objective is Objective is that reduce the problem to smaller size and see how do we look at the subsequence and then proceed with that. So let's take a smaller problem. On iteration one, when I start, we have all these eight elements. Now look at this solution for if I find a solution of let's say first seven elements. When I find a solution of first seven elements. Can I, using that solution, build a new solution? Let's say this array of the seven elements gives me max sum of x. And also look at when I get this subsequence, my new element is three. This element can contribute to max one only if the last suffix, sorry, my last element of 3 can only contribute to a solution if some suffix of the last solution plus this 3 is more than the maxa. So what I need to do is my small the subsequence of size 7 that and minus 1 gives me two things. One is the maxim of the subsequence. Other is the suffix sum, last suffix sum, whatever that is. And if this suffix sum happens to be negative, it will always be zero. Because if it's negative, it's going to reduce the value by adding this. So suffix sum will never take it more than zero, sorry, less than zero, either zero, whatever value is. So each sub problem, and I'm saying again, this is the crucial part in dividing this problem. 
So given this problem, look any point, I taken this element out. Look at this subsequence of seven element. Now that subsequence gives me one is the maximum, whatever that maximum happens to be. Plus it gives me this suffix sum. What was the suffix sum? Is? And the suffix sum. Mommy. Mommy. A person is speaking to mom. Can you please keep this? Uh, uh, are you in the silent mode? Suffix sum. So look at the suffix sum. Either it will be zero or it's going to be positive number. If it is positive number, I add this last element to the positive number. And if this suffix sum happens to be more than maximum, then I update the maximum. If any point in time, my maximum, my suffix sum becomes negative, I'll make it zero. And that's all basically proceed. And that is what the problem is. So let's look at when I keep reducing it, how does it really work out? My first invocation, Array element 8, my last element is 3. Then invoke, reduce the size to further 7. So my smaller size problem is element of size 1. So this is my smallest element of size 1, which is 2. And in this case, my maximum would be 2. And my suffix sum is also 2. So when I come to the last element, at this point in time, my array size, look at when in this last invocation, when I come to array size of 1, when array size is 1, in that case, my max sum is 2, which is this value. My suffix is also 2, because this is the suffix. Now I got the solution of 1. I look at and combine this solution with the next one. So it, it returns max of 2, suffix of 2. Let's go to the next one. Now last element, when I come to this, when this has given me solution, let's look at when I get this second minus 3. If I look at suffix is 2, suffix is 2, and if I add minus 3 to it, it becomes 1. So I'll set suffix to 0. And that means my max still remains 2, max does not change. So I've got a solution now for the array size of 2, where you say max is 2 and suffix is 0. Now use the solution of these two elements and look at my third element, which is 1.5. My suffix is 0. My suffix is 0 so far. So if I add 0 plus 1.5 suffix become 1.5 so my suffix is 1.5 now if we look at my previous max is 2 but if i add suffix to 0 my max becomes 1.5 sorry this should not be 0 this should be 1.5 let me correct it so my last suffix is 0 0 plus 1.5 is 1.5, which is less than 2. So that means my sequence of three elements max still remains 2. My suffix becomes 1.5. Now let's now look at the solution of four elements. So these three elements has given me suffix of 1.5, max of 2. Now suffix of 1.5 plus the last suffix minus 1, which becomes 0.5, this positive. So I keep my suffix as 0.5. But look at my suffix of 1.5 plus minus 1, which is minus 1, which gives me minus 0.5. So my previous max is still larger 2. That means the sol solution of these four elements my max remains 2 and my suffix becomes 0 0.5. So now let's look at solution to number 5 elements. Now so far my sub max sum is 2 and my suffix happens to be 0.5. Now looking at the element 3. Daddy, what's your name? 
when I three no, I'm never busy. plus suffix I'm never five, busy. it gives me three point five. That means this max. If I take this suffix of these four elements, which is point five, add this to current element, so this becomes three point five. My previous max is two. That means my previous max is two. That means my my current max should become three point five. So my current max is three point five because it is more than the previous max, and my suffix become three point five. So this gives me solution of five elements. Now let's come to element number six. This is minus two. The suffix becomes three point five minus two, which is one point five. My max remains three point five because suffix three point five plus minus two is one point five, which is less than three point five. So I maintain my Max to be three point five. I'll continue in this way. Next situation, when I come back there, last element, so on and so forth, and continue in this process. You take this one, then take this one. Basically, see your max is three point five, and that is what you are interested in. So what we have done is we losing the problem from n to n minus one, n minus one to n minus two, and so on and so forth. Till we go to a problem size of one, is when you solve it, is problem gives me maximum. It also gives me suffix sum. Then I look at the current element, add it to the suffix sum. If this addition plus suffix sum is more than the max, I update the max. Is suffix sum. Plus the current element is less than the max. I retain the max. But every time I always update the suffix sum, and any time suffix sum becomes negative, I set it to zero. And this way, using decrease and conquer, we can solve the problem. And this is what is expected. Any questions on this so far? If no questions, then I'll proceed. Second was left rotation of a string by given size. So consider a string of size n, a string of size n, and positive integer m. One minute. We need to rotate by left. So if I did so, let's say m is equal to five. That means the five element A, B, C, D, E should come at the end. This five element A, B, C, D, E should come at the end, and other elements after the F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and this is what we need to do: rotate it. And that what we are saying again: can we use decrease and conquer, and not doing by tracer? So how do decrease and conquer look at? We use basically mathematical property. Let's consider a string. X is equal to x1 and x2. So what we're saying is, I divide this string into two parts. This is my x1. This is my x2. And essentially, if you look at, we know that relation x1 x2 reverse is same as x2 reverse prime x1. Right. So reverse of x1 x2 is reverse of x2 followed by reverse of x1, and this is the property we will basically use. So what we want to do this is so implies reverse. So what we want to do is I just said reverse of a b c d d c b a. So use the reverse method two times. So primarily what you need to do is take the string and do the two reverse. Do the two reverses, so you do the reverse of this part. Sorry, we said we made into let's say this. Do the reverse of this, and doing this reverse, we need to apply divide and conquer or decrease and conquer. So do this reverse using decrease and conquer. Similarly, do the reverse. Using decrease and conquer, and then do reverse of combine together. 
and that is what will give you the answer. So if you look at, if I do the reverse of A, B, C, D, E, it is gives me E, D, C, B, A. This reverse would give me L, K, J, so on and so forth. And if I do the whole reverse, I'll basically get, because last one would be F, A, R, G, F. So for the whole reverse, I'll get F, G, F, I, J, K, L. And then I'll get, this is A, A, B, C, B, get, and that is what. So how to do the reverse? You look at the reverse. So essentially, you take the problem. Reverse meaning A has to go to E, and E has to go to A. So in every time I decrease the problem size by two, I take a string of if it is five, I take it three, then take it one. One could be reverse of itself, and then combine with reverse D and B. So after one, when I got the reverse of C, but B and D, B comes here, D comes here, I got reverse of three, for five, C comes here, and A comes here. So by doing, decreasing problem by size two, I'm doing a reverse, and that is what it basically is. So to split the string, so if I need to split by M, make it first M characters as X1, Remaining n minus 1 as x2. This is first m characters. This is n minus m characters. Do a reverse of x1 using decrease and conquer by 2. Do a reverse of x2 by decrease and conquer. Decrease and conquer. Decrease by 2. And then you so essentially what you get the string is x2 prime, sorry, x1 reverse will give me x1 prime, x2 reverse would give me x2 prime. If I take the whole reverse, I'll, what I'll get is x2, x1, and this is what I originally wanted because I wanted x1 to come here and what I see. So your decrease and conquer has to be applied in the reverse method and that is what this question was all about. Any questions so far? Anybody ask question please raise a chat box, either way is fine. If not, I'll proceed further to the next one. This is Hanoi Tower with five towers. What it's saying is, let's look at, we know how to solve, we know how to solve with three towers. So what we'll do is, we divide the problem, we know we have two extra towers. So we divide the problem into three parts make it n by 3, n by 3, n by 3, because then I can solve using those n by 3 using traditional method. So essentially move top n by 3 disk, which is the ceiling of that. That means if n is 7, my floor of 7 by 3 is equal to 3, which is basically 2.33 floor which is three. So that means move top three disk from A to tower C using empty tower T. And this is using traditional Hanoi three towers. Similarly, move middle N by three disk. So move top N by three disk from A to C using E as empty, move middle n by 3 from A to 2 using E as empty, and then the bottom modes which are the heaviest one, move the, sorry, this is bottom not top, mistake. Move bottom n by 3 disk from A to B. Now you look at, at 
So if originally, if you look at originally, this was my towers. So divided into three parts, n by three, n by three. This is n by three. This is my tower B. This is my C. This is my D. This is my E. I said move this n by three disk to tower C using this as an empty. So after this means uh, this will be left with 2n by 3 disk and C will got this top n by 3 disk. Now move the middle n by 3 disk to D using E as an empty. So after this, all I am left with is bottom n by 3 to tower A, top n by 3 to tower C, middle n by 3. to tower D is empty. Now move the bottom n by 3 to tower B using again tower E. So at this I have n by 3 here. Now these bottoms are in right place and these n by 3 we are moving using traditional oh no, using traditional Method. Now I can move this n by 3 disk middle one to it and then so I'll move this n by 3 to middle so at, after this my b would have bottom n by 3 middle n by 3 and finally uh, sorry one minute I made a mistake there. My bottom n by 3 which is the heaviest I've come here after this this has to come middle one so I move the middle n by 3 here and then again using this e as empty and then I move the top n by 3 here so I get whole thing as back here so using each n by 3 I'll basically move it so look what I really get as far as my complexity is concerned my TN becomes unsolving how many problems if you look at uh, what I'm solving here is so let me again here tower A tower B tower C tower D tower E so first I'm moving n by 3 here then I am moving n by 3 here. Then I am moving n by 3 here. So I have n by 3 move plus n by 3 move plus n by 3 move. Then I am moving n by 3 here plus n by 3. And then I am moving another n by 3 here plus n by 3. So essentially, my problem is Tn is equal to 5. So this is using 5 towers and this is using my traditional, using 3 tower methods, n by 3. And we know that Tn by 3 using traditional method can be done, 2 raised to power n minus 1. So this Tn by 3 gives me solution as 2 raised to power n by 3 minus 1. 5 is a multiplication there. And that's the time we'll be able to solve this star problem using the five days. That's what this question was all about. And this is what we're basically saying, do that. And you can verify it using time complexity of I'm using n as six, using eight, nine, whatever number, and this should work for. So for example, as I said, look at initially, have one disk b is empty c is empty d is empty is empty i'm moving top three which is d1 d2 d3 to tower e is what i have done so top three then i move middle three so middle two because seven by three 
is 2.3. So the first part, I take ceiling part, and other part, I take floor part, which is 2 and 2. So that means A to E, I move 3, then middle is 2, when I move middle 2, A remains with the heaviest 2, D gets, D get the D4 and D5, and I have moved the top, D1, 2, 2, 3, and this is what I got. Now what I need to do is move, because my, I wanted to move A to B, so I move A to B, I'm moving this D6, D7 to B, A becomes empty, my D has is still same, whatever D4, the middle part, and E has the top part, and then I'll move this D4, D5 on top of B, what I'm doing, so D4, D5, and D6, D7, and finally, I would move the D1, D2, D3 to that. So when I move D1, D3, this is what I'll get. So this many moves, and my total moves basically. So if I were to use three tower solutions, my total move to 2, 7, minus 1, whereas here, I'm basically getting 5 into 2 raised to power 3 minus 1, or 2 raised to minus 1, that my solutions would. And that is what we're trying to look at, figure it out. That was the question to be done. So divide into problem, the known problem of smaller size, and solve it. So given a problem of n size, we divide it into problem of size n by 3, and solve it. This was the question of Hanoi Star. Next was a question of, any questions on Honest Tower? Karthik, I already sent these slides. Please look at the Google group. I sent yesterday evening. The slides are available. And after the lecture I'm recording, I'll upload this lecture in YouTube and send this as well. Any other questions? Let's look at the question of counterfeit problem using log and comparisons. Question is given the end coins, one is bad coin, either it is lighter or heavier, but we don't know whether it is lighter or heavier. So, how do we proceed? Figure it out. So, following is the mechanism to be told. So, basically, divide into two parts and compare. Now, comparison balance only tells you whether one is lighter or heavier, but you cannot do actual weight. And that being the case, how do you proceed, figure it out. So let's say look at solve a problem by question. So if I'm putting a balance, if left is lighter, balance will give me a minus one. If the two weights are equal, it gives me zero. If the left one is heavier, it will give you plus one. And that is what using compare. So develop a compare method, which actually knows which one is lighter or heavier and so compare method gets two inputs. First input is array one, second input is array two of these coins, and it knows which coin is heavier or lighter. Based on that, it gives you result. The main code has to use this method of compare to find out which is the lighter coin or heavier coin, and then explain that with an example there. Let's say consider you have 50 coins, and consider that coin 23 was bad and it is a lighter coin. Assume we know, but we have to find out using compare. So we first compare 1 to 25 and 26 to 50. My compare method knows that 23 is lighter. So that means this array is lighter than this. So compare would return minus 1. At this part, I don't know whether 1 to 25 has a lighter coin or 26 to 50 has a heavier coin. I have no clue but I need to find out. Next is, I take this part, 1 to 25, divide into two, half part, 1 to 12, and 13 to 24. Now, my, if you look at my compare method, no, 23 is a lighter coin. That means 1 to 12 would be heavier than 13 to 24. This also means that my bad coin is in this side. We knew that at this point that this comparison is lighter, and now this is comparison is heavier than this. 
So from the fact that this is lighter, that means my coin is lighter. And the because this is heavier, I have a lighter coin in this. And that is what I basically made the determination and proceed. Or I can continue the same way. I compare 1 to 6 and 7 to 12. This will give me 0. That means all these coins 1 to 12 are same weight. I can discard it. Then go 13 to 24. Take 6 coins, see 13 to 18. 9 to 24. This 13, 18 would be heavier than 1924 because coin 23 is lighter. This gives me a plus one. I know that my coin is basically lighter. That remains in 1924. I divide into two parts 92 to 21, 22 to 24. Again, because this is lighter, this would be heavier. Compare gives me plus one. Compare gives me plus one. So that means defective ball is between 22 to 24. I proceed further, divide 22 and 23 one ball each, compare. And when I compare, just one guy's minute, I have some monkeys, let me go inside. Just give me a minute. Kola. Just one minute, guys. Sorry guys, I'm audible now. Yes. Okay. So I compare this 22 with 23. This gives me plus one, means 22 is higher than 23. And we already made a decision. The second comparison that my con is lighter, so I can determine 23 is lighter. So total comparison is six, and six is basically log 50 which is 6 and that's how I can determine whether it's a lighter coin or a heavier coin. Next question was given a linked list we need to determine whether it is a terminating or a circulating. If it is circulating pointer will point somewhere in the middle of the list if it is terminating it will be null but you don't know an objective is to find this in linear time. Now, if it is a terminating list, you can traverse and you'll come to the end. But if it is pointing somewhere in the middle, you'll be keep making rounds and rounds and rounds and never terminate. If I were to do single point and traversal, I would never be able to terminate this and become infinite. So, how do I figure out whether terminating? or it is the circulating. So the way you work is basically keep two pointers. And first pointer, you basically move one step at a time. And second pointer, you move two step at a time. And every time you move two step, you basically see, while well, moving two step, are we crossing this first pointer? If so, then we know that it is circulating. It's not circulating, will anyway terminate. So every time you proceed somewhere, one pointer and the second pointer, so when you move two pointer at a time, sorry. When you move two pointer at a time, so let's say my yellow is one pointer and blue is two, 
So next time I just to move here, blue would basically come here. Then you move, yellow would move here. Blue would move further here, then yellow comes. And at this point in time, blue will, you keep comparing the pointer value and this one matches, then you know that my faster pointer has crossed this smaller pointer. That means it is circulating. This is one of the favorite interview questions as well. How do you determine? And this assignment is to do in this course. That was the assignment about. If any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll keep proceeding. If none, let me proceed. This Karatsub algorithm to multiply two positive numbers, which is what I basically said. So look at, and this is what I'll explain again in lecture 13. If the two decimal numbers from a file, large numbers, 10 digit, 20 digit, 30 digit. Well, somebody asked, why can't you put an integer notation and multiply and get the answer? Integer notation, if an integer 32 bit, maximum value you can get is one, 4 billion, but if a number happens to be 20 digits, even 64 bit integer won't be able to handle it. So that means you need to have a different algorithm. How do you deal with it? And that is what this algorithm basically used. This is basically a divide and conquer algorithm. You divide into two parts, keep doing it. And I would say for this, go to the lecture 13. The slides are uploaded and I'll cover that tomorrow as well. So I will not discuss now, look at that and then try to solve it. Let me move to question number seven, which was basically comparison for Fibonacci number. And normally we know it takes order n time, but question was, can we do this computation in order log n time? How do we do that? Remember we can do any multiplication power of any number in log n time because I can do divide power into half, add it. The same question was asked you in the T1 as well, compute power n, power of, k. so I need to compute k raised to power n in log n time. And what we said is compute k raised to n by two, if n is even, Let's say x is n by 2, k is to power n by 2, x star x. I'm doing only one recursion. So I've given the problem size n. I made it to size n by 2 half. If n happens to be odd, then I can say x is equal to k raised to power n. If x is odd, so let me do it again. If n is e1, then compare x is k raised to n by 2, return x star x. If n is odd, If n is odd, x is equal to k raised to power n minus 1 by 2 and return k star x star x. So x. look at what I've done. Given a problem of size power n, I reduce to size of either n minus 1 by 2 or n by 2 if it was even. And I'll keep doing it till I get n is equal to 1. So that means if I keep dividing by 2, I'm doing only log n invocations. With log n invocations, I'm doing fixed operation. So I can compute the power n, power let's say of any element k, power n in log n time. We use this mechanism to do Fibonacci number. So whether it is power of number k multiplication or we even we can do power of a metric and that is what this question was and what I gave you the hint about. So let us look at consider the following consider a square matrix 0 1 1 1 and if you look at fn minus 1 
and fn if you take as a row matrix so multiply the row matrix fn minus 2 fn minus 1 to this square matrix this multiplication gives me this by because when i multiply this by this what i get is fn minus 2 0 so my i get fn minus 1 and here i get fn minus 2 fn minus 2 to 1 it gives me fn minus 2 plus fn minus 1 into 1 fn minus 1 which is nothing but f so if i take the last two numbers in a row matrix multiply by the square matrix and so if i look at the second element of the row matrix i always get the f so that means i can keep expanding it and all i need to do is can I compute the power of n? So computing the power 0, 1, 1, 1 of this power n, this we already done the power computation. This computation can be done in log n time. And so I compute this power. All I need to do is my fn minus 1, fn would be f1, f0 into 0, 1, 1, 1 power n this power the matrix power n can be computed in log n time one more multiplication and then i can find this fn so this is how you can find fn in logarithm n time and not in normal n time this is what the question was you're not supposed to use iteration so using divide and conquer find the multiplication of this matrix in log n time and once you find the matrix multiplication log n time, then apply this formula to find the fn. And this was the question. If anybody's question, raise me. Otherwise, I'll continue with the next slide. I have basically explained this. We're going to follow up, continue, and you should be fine. And this is how do you compute power. I have given you power of x raised to power n. This is the formula. This is what the question was given in the exam as well. You look at that so instead of here number x is a matrix that's all is the difference and you can compute this and solve this problem compute same way and should be found next was find the median and median was this way to basically go back to your what is called quick sort apply the same technique quick sort has partitioning and then sorting left half and right half. Here I want to find the median. That means half the element should be smaller than this, half the element should be larger than this. So how do you find the median? Again, partition. It is using some pivot element. When you partition, some elements could be yeah, Suja Kosik has a question. Sir, for problem six, should we do even for decimal also? One minute. One question was, what is the question six? Let me go back to question six. Parat Suba. It No, we are doing only for basically these integer numbers. Decimal is a floating point, different case. But it come into precision point. So let me leave it away there. In that sense, I will not do. Question number seven. As Fibonacci, so question number seven, this is from Pawan Kumar. Can we use arrays? How do you use arrays? Because the, the moment you do arrays, it will become order n. So Pawan, that's the reason I say you use matrix multiplication. Question is, we need to do order log n time and not in order n time. This is the point I'm trying to make here. So using an array, I don't think you can do in order log n time. And that's what I'm trying to basically. So let's say given numbers are x, the median is 6. How do we figure out? Choose a pivot. If pivot happens to be in this position, we are done. If it is not, if pivot position, let's say we look at 3, if it happens to be in position less than this, then we know median will be in the right half. If pivot happens to be, so let's say if I take 3, 
So my elements would be three would divide only two would be the first one and rest would be more. So I know my medium would be remaining part. And if by what happens to be other part of it, then I know medium would be left half. So every time I'm doing this, I'm decreasing my problem size into two. But each problem, I need to look at the whole element of n. So time is order n, but I can still find it out. So let's look at the example how to be solved. Consider this, this is my array size of n. Median is fifth element in the sorted array. So let's say my pivot is three. If pivot is three, this will divide the array into two parts. First is two, then my element three, and the remaining part. Now look, this element three is in position two, but I'm interested in element in position five. That means my medium should be in the second array, but I already discarded two elements. So I need to find median of this of third. That's what I'm looking at is starting from this. So medium is second half at the third position. Again, look at a pivot. This will divide into two parts. This part and this part. There's no right half. That means since median should be still in this part in the third position. Again, look at the pivot, which is eight. To further divide four, five, six, seven. Eight is this. Now look, median has come to out of this third part here. That means the median here would be in the third part again because it's not changed because this is right part. So I look at the median in third part here. I take the pivot element as four. I divide it. So you get four. And then this part, now pivot already come to third position. That means my median would be in this, in the second position. And then I take pivot as six. It divides here. And we know median is fifth position. But every time I partitioning my array, looking at where does the partition element belongs to, based on that if partition element belongs to a second half, my median value does not change. If partition value belongs to pivot belongs to first half, my median get decreased by the size of the first half. And that way by proceeding, you can find the median. And this was the question about. So use quick sort techniques, but don't solve both this first half and second half. Just look at where the median belongs to and do the partitioning again. So job is to keep doing partitioning till you find the median. There's no sorting required, only partitioning using pivot, and then you can find the median. Actually, you can using the same technique to find k at the smallest element. Using same technique, the median I'm saying n by two is smallest element. I can find k at the smallest element. This is what we can basically do. This was the question. Next was finding a duplicate numbers, and I think I had given you order log n time, which was bad. It should be done in order n time. What you need to do is we know that one number is duplicate. So compute n by two. And basically, start reading the numbers and count. How many numbers come between one to n by two? And how many numbers comes between n by two plus one to n? One of them would be more. And and then whichever is more, I repeat the process. And that is what basically by dividing the problem again, I'm dividing a problem into n by two in each step. So this is divide and conquer, and that's how I proceed. So let's take an example here. Let's say this number where we have some duplicate number, and the uh, take this element, partition it. Sorry, which one I'm doing? One minute. Yeah, find a duplicate number. Array is this eight. One minute. What I've done here is no. I think I've given a wrong answer here. This is for binary insert. I probably given the wrong answer here. 
So the way you need to work is in this case. So given the number here, whatever numbers are, when you do n by 2, let's say in this case, this is the input array. So this is wrong. So I given a wrong answer there. So it should be all the 1920 numbers. So let's say the numbers happens to be, let's say 3, 4, 1, 2, 6, 7, 5, and let's say 3. So I have got 8 numbers and 3 is duplicate. So my n is equal to 7 and I need to find duplicate. So I know 7 by half is 3. What I need to do is keep reading and see what are the numbers between 1 to 3 and what are the numbers between 4 to 7. So if I count 1 to 3, I'll get 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 1 to 3, I have 4 number. Whereas 1 to 3, I'm expecting only 3. I've got the 4 number. 4 to 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. I should get 4 numbers and I have 4 numbers here. So that means because 1, 2, 3, I'm expecting 3, I get 4 numbers. So that means my duplicate lies here. I repeat the process. So my numbers are now stored. So the number I'll get is 3, 1, 2, and 3. Again, the range is 1, 2, 3. Let me find the middle 2. So count between 1, 2, 2, and 3, 2, 3. In this, I'll expect two numbers. In this, I'll expect only one number, but when I count between 1, 2, 2, I get 1 and 2, 2, which is fine, and 3, I get 2. So I know my 3 number is basically duplicate number. So each time I'm dividing a problem into half, counting the number of elements, is like a binary search, keep dividing, and then looking at which has the more numbers. Look at that partition, keep dividing. So using log n divisions, but since in each division I am comparing the number, so I still need to look at order n time, but number of divisions would be order log n. And that is what this question was about. Next was call a gift matching problem. So this is a variation of quick sort. Basically, you're given a n gifts and n boxes, and we are guaranteed that each gift can come in each box. Job is to match how to proceed. This is what the question was using order n log n. So essentially, the technique is primarily take the one box as a pivot. Using this box as a pivot, partition the gift. When you partition the gifts, Using this pivot, you'll get left half of all the gifts having size less than the box. You'll get a right half, which are all on all the gifts which are bigger than the box. And then I partition the boxes as well. And then I got two sub problems and match accordingly. Let's look at the example there. So essentially, what you're saying is, let's say take a random element of B as pivot for G. Let's say my random element is A. I'm just taking a random element something. Now using this 8, partition the boxes. Sorry, uh, I'm saying random element of B. Now random element of B, which is to be consistent, I take random element of B as 8. And then partition J with this pivot. And a partition J with this pivot, what I get is look at 2. So all these elements, 1915, basically becomes your right part, 1620, come here, 1117, then 18, 12, 13, 9, and 14, and all the smaller element like 5. 2, 4, 1, 7, 3, and 6. So using the 
pivot of 8 in the boxes. I have partitioned my gifts into two parts, left half and the right half. Now I use the same pivot 8, partition the boxes as well. When I partition the boxes, I'll get first partition containing this, second partition containing this. We already know that box 8 matches with gift 8, so this part is done. And now you look at boxes of this have to be matched only with gift of this size and boxes of this has to be matched with gifts of this size. This is a perfect match. So given the problem of size n, I'm divided into two problems of gift on the left of partition and boxes and gift on boxes on the right of partition. Repeat the process and that way you can match with each gift with each box. And that is what to so basically sub problem. So my given problem was box of n, gifts of n. I reduced the problem to box of left half and gift of left half and box of right half and gifts of right half. So using this, I didn't divide and conquer. And that's the way we solve the problem. And that's what we put. Otherwise, alternating A and B problem, let's say a student of section A and section B are sitting together where n is positive integers and objective is I want to shuffle such a way that the middle part this let's say so you have two n students n is 2m so get a a a a a and b b b b b and what I want is for the first part one quarter I alternate a b a b And the and the middle part I do B A B A. This is what I basically want. So how do we solve the problem? This we have to use what is called decrease and conquer. Decrease and Concur. Reduce the problem of size 4, and if we reduce the problem to size 4, then we can solve it. So solve it two ways. First solve for the middle part, and then solve for the first and the third part. And that is what we need to basically be doing. And I'll explain it with an example there. Let's say if I'm solving the middle part first, I didn't reduce the size and solve by brute force. When you do middle part, if only two elements. I just swap that to it becomes B A. If I have the four elements A, B, B, then we are saying swap the last element and the first element. And so the last element with first element, this B elements comes here and this A element goes there. So if element of four size of four, I swap the first and the last and then keep repeating the process. And that is what I'll basically get the middle part problem. Once I solve this, then I can solve the first and third part. Here, if this is the case. If it's just two, I keep AB, if size four. In this case, I swap second from the left, which is A, and second from the right, which is B, and swap it. So essentially, this A goes here and this b gets swapped in the middle part i am swapping the first and the last here i am swapping second and the third or second from the left and second from the right and repeat the process the what basically doing just to look at the example consider my input is 6a and 6b i want to solve my middle part first so let me take the middle part problem as this a a a b b b. I remove the these two parts, solve to a smaller problem, and this means a b becomes b a. Now this a need to go here, this a need to go here, and this b need to come here. 
and my basically problem becomes B A D A D A. Now if I solve this this problem, which is this A. This part is already solved, and this B and this you already solved as B A B A B A. We don't have to worry about it. Again, decrease the problem by size two. So decrease by two from here, decrease by two from here. Look at this and then solve it. Here, I don't have to do anything. When I merge it, I'll swap this B by this A and this A by this B. So this will become AB. This A, this becomes BAB and whatever the middle part is. And then I'll continue. This part becomes ABA, BAB, and this, this thing, then what will work? If you see size of four, I also give it the same way. So take this middle part first, 4a and 4b, solve this first, and then solve this first four and last four, and that's how do alternating a and b. And that's the way we should basically do that. Next was boundary instruction sort, and this is what we are basically saying. Essentially, the objective is, you know, instruction sort, we insert element into right place. We keep comparing from the right, and wherever the right place is, insert it. So we are doing linear comparison, and it takes linear time. So only comparison to find the right place, we need to do binary search. But insertion, I need to shift right every element, and that will take me. So my time complexity overall does not change, but binary insert means at least my searching time changes. And that's the benefit I get with binary insert search. So look at each element. Find out the right place in the left half of the array. And once I find that element left half of the array, then I save it. I mean, search the right place, and then simpler by one. That basically what insertion binary sort. If we look at the example here, initially my sorted element is empty. This is my whole unsorted element. I take element 8. Since element is empty, my binary search, no stuff is needed, zero. And I get sorted elements of 8 and unsorted elements of this. Now I take this element 10. Since my sorted is 8, binary search will take me only one time and I insert it into right place. So this becomes my sorted array and this remains my unsorted. Now look at 19. I For 19, I do a binary search for 8 and 10. When I do binary search for 8 and 10, in this, when I do a binary search, I do only one comparison in the middle, and then I know it's 10, I'm done, and then I insert. So insert comes here, and I'm left with the remaining element here. Next, I proceed with 5. So this is my sorted array, and this is my unsorted array. I take element 5, do a binary search, it will come here, and come here. I do two comparisons in binary search. Insert 5. Sorry, sorted would become this is bad here. It should come here. My typo error. So this should be 5, 8, 10, and 90. And this is my unsorted array. Next, I take the element 17. Again, I think I made a mess. I made copy paste error. So this 5 should come here. Now take 17, compare in this, this element of size 5, so log 5 would be 3. So I compare only 3 elements and then I do to right place. So my array would again become, this would come here. My sorted array becomes size 6 and my unsorted array is this. When I look at 4, element of 6, I do binary search, compare where 4 comes in, from the beginning of binary search, so my number of comparisons is still 3, and then how it proceed, and that's the way it has to be done. So this way you need to proceed, this is what I talked about, so doing that, solve all the problems, look at it, write the program, and now that, any questions so far?
If any of your question, you can write in the chat box or you can put in, add you ask me anything you have. If not, then our college is closed till about 14th of April as per the government. I would suggest that I was expecting initially we said college was closed till 21st March. So given that, I'll suggest you to submit all the assignments by the coming Monday. So what was that today is second is Thursday. Second is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So on about April 6th is what our submission date would be. So I expect you to submit all the assignments by team by April 6th. And this is what I'm basically looking at. Just one minute. I want to make sure my date is right. Yeah, Monday is April 6th. So do the all submission by April 6th on GitHub. Then I can evaluate. So in tomorrow's lecture, we'll discuss lecture 13, which is stress on symmetric multiple. Thank you. If any questions, ask me. If no questions, you can drop out. Solve the problem. Talk to your team members and submit the assignment by Monday, April 6th. Thank you.